while I write or speak, I do but look, we are ever an apparent. What we are cannot be transfused into word a book. Our soul from us is infinitely far. However much we give our thoughts the will to be our soul and chatter it abroad, our hearts are incommunicable still. In what we show ourselves, we are ignored. The abyss from soul to soul cannot be bridged by any skill of thought, a trick of seeming. And to our very selves we are bridged when we would utter to our thought our being. We are our dreams of ourselves, souls by dreams, and each to each are the dreams of other's dreams. If that apparent thought of life's delight, our tingled flesh sense circumscribes, were seen by aught save reflex and coconal sight, joy, flesh, and life might prove but a grass screen. Happily, truth's body is no idle being. Appearance, even as appearance lies, happily outlaws, dark, vague, warm sense of seeing is the choked vision of blindfolded eyes. Or from what comes to thought's sense of life? Not. All is either the rational world we see, or some aught else who has been unknown doth wrought its use for our thought's use. Whence taketh me a qualm like ache of life, a body deep soul hate of what we seek and what we read. When I do think my meanest line shall be more in time's use than my creating whole, that future eyes more clearly shall feel me in this inked page than in my direct soul. When I conjecture put to make me sing and readers of me in some after time, thankful to some idea of my being that doth not even my with gun to sell rhyme, and anger at the essence of the world that makes this thus of think about this wise, takes my soul by the throat, and makes it hurled in nightly horrors of despair surmise, and I become the mere sense of a rage that lacks the very words as a waste might swage. I could not think of thee as piece of rot. Yet such thou wert, for thou hadst been long dead. Yet thou livest entire in my seen thought, and what thou wert in me had never fled. Nay, I had fixed the moments of thy beauty, thy ebon smile, thy kisses readiness, and memory had taught my heart the duty to know thee ever at that deathlessness. But when I came, where thou wert late, and saw the natural flowers ignoring thee some blame, and the encroaching grass with casual floor framing the stone to each where was thy name. I knew not how to feel, nor what to be towards thy fate's material secrecy. How can I think, or write my thoughts to action, when the miserly press which there's need aches to a narrowness of split distraction, my soul appalled at the world's work's time read? How can I pause my thoughts upon the task my soul was born to think that it must do, when every moment has a thought to ask, to fit the immediate craving out skew? The coin I keep for marrying my muse, and build our home is greater time to be, becomes deserved by needs of each day's use, and I feel beggared of infinity, like a true Christian sinner, each day flash driven by his own act to forfeit his wished heaven. As a bad orator, badly or book skilled, doth overflow his purpose with made heat, and like a clock wins with loudness willed, what should have been an inner instinct's feet, or as a prose wit, harshly poet turned, lacking the subtle music in his measure, with useless care labours but to be spurned, 
caught in an alien speech the muse's pleasure i study how to love or how to hate estranged by consciousness from sentiment whether thought feeling forced to be sedate even when the feeling's nature is violent as who would learn to swim without the river one nearest to the trick as far as ever thy words are torch to me that scarce grieve thee that entire death shall null my entire thought and i feel torture not that i believe thee but that i cannot disbelieve thee not shall that of me that now contains the stars be by the very contained stars survived thus were fate all unjust yet what truth bars an all unjust fate's truth from being believed conjecture cannot fit to this scene rolled a garment of its thought untorn a covering or with its stuffed garb forge another world without itself its dead deceit discovering so all being possible an idle thought may less idle thoughts self know no truer dismay How many masks were we, and other masks, upon our countenance of soul? And when, if for self-sport this soul itself unmasks, knows it the last mask off and the face plain? The true mask feels no inside to the mask, but looks out of the mask by two masked eyes. Whatever consciousness begins the task, the task's accepted use to sleepless ties. Like a child frighted by its mirrored faces, our souls, that children are, being thought losing, foist otherness upon their singular maces and get a whole world on their forgot causing. And when a thought would undermask our souls masking, itself goes not unmasked to the unmasking. Oh, to be idle, loving idle. But I am idle all in hate of me. Ever an action's dream, in the false stress of purposed action, and never set to be. Like a fierce beast self bent in a bait lair, my will to act binds with excess my action. Not act in coils that thought with rage to despair, and act in rage doth paint despair distraction. Like someone sinking in a treacherous sand, each gesture to deliver sinks the more. The struggle avails not, and to raise no hand, though but more slowly useless, we have no power. And slay I the dead life each day doth bring, repurposed for next day's repurposing. As to a child, I talked my heart asleep with empty promise of the coming day, and it slept rather for my words made sleep than from a thought what their sense did say for did it care for sense would it not wake and question closer to the morrow's pleasure would it not edge nearer my words to take the promise in the meeting of its measure so if it slept twas that it cared but for the present sleepy use of promised joy thanking the fruit but for the forecome flower which the less active senses best enjoy thus with deceit do i detain the heart of which deceit's self knows itself a part like to a ship that storms urge on its course by its own trials our soul is sure made the very things that make the voice worse do make it better its peril is its aid and as the storm drives from the storm, our heart within the peril is imperiled grows. The port is near, the more from port we part, the port where to our driven direction goes. If we reap knowledge to cross profit, this from storms we learn, when the storm's height doth drive, that the black presence of its violence is the pushing promise of near far blue skies learn we but how to have the pilot's skill and the storm's very might shall mate our will
As the lone, frighted user of a night road suddenly turns round, nothing to detect, yet of his fierce sense keepeth still the load of that brings nothing in all but suspect, and the killed terror moves to him more near of something that from nothing casts a spell, that when he moves to fright more is not there, and is only visible when invisible. So I, upon the road, turn round in thought, and nothing viewing do no carriage take, but my more terror, from no seen cars yet, to that felt corporate emptiness forsake, and draw my sense of mistress' horror from seeing no mistress' mystery alone. When I should be asleep to mine own voice, in telling thee how much thou loves my dream, I find my listening to myself, the noise of my words are that in my hearing them. Yet wonder not, this is the poet's soul. I could not tell thee well of how I love, loved I not less by knowing it, or all myself my love, and no thought love to prove. What consciousness makes more by consciousness? It makes less, for it makes it less itself. My sense of love could not my love redress, did it not for its span love's own love pelf. Poets loves this, as in these words I prove thee. I love my love for thee more than I love thee. We are born at sunset and we die at morn, and the whole darkness of the world we know, how can we guess its truth to darkness born, the obscure consequence of absent glow? Only the stars to teach us light. We grasp their scattered smallnessness with thoughts that stray, and though their eyes look through night's complete mask, yet they speak not the features of the day. Why should these small denials of the whole, more than the black hole, the pleasing eyes attract? Why what it calls worth does the captive soul add to the small and from the large detract? So put our light's love, wishing it night stretch, and nightly thought of day we darkly reach. Like a bad suitor, desperate and trembling, from the mixed sense of being not loved and loving, who with feared longing half would know, dissembling with what he'd wish proved, what he fears soon proving, I look within her eyes, afraid to look, it perplexed into looking, at the worth this verse may have, and wonder of my book, to what thoughts shall an alien hearts give birth. But, as he who doth love, and love in hopes, yet hope in fears, fears to put proof to proof, and in his mind for possible proofs gropes, delaying the true proof, lest the real thing scoff. I daily live, if fame I dream to see, but by my thought of others, thought of me. We never joy in joy to that full point, regret to the wish joy had enjoyed been, nor have the strength regret to disappoint, recalling not past joy's fault, but its mean. Yet joy was joy when it enjoyed was, and after enjoyed when as joy recalled, it must have been joy ere its joy did pass and recalled joy still, since it's been past gold. Alas, all this is useless. For joy is in enjoying, not in thinking of enjoying. Its mere thought mirroring gets itself to the sin, by mere reflecting solid life destroying. Yet the more thought we take to thought to prove, it must not think, doth further from joy move. My love, and not I, is the egoist. My love for thee loves itself more than thee, ay, more than me, in whom it doth exist, and makes me live that it may feed on me. 
and the country of bridges, the bridges more real than the shores it doth unsever. So in our world, all of relation, and this is true, that truer is love than I the lover. This thought, therefore, comes lightly to doubt's door, if we, seeing substance of this world, are not mere intervals, God's absence, and no more, hallows in real consciousness and thought. And if it is possible to thought to bear this fruit, why should it not be possible to truth? Indefinite space, which by to substance night, in one black mystery to void mysteries blends, the stray stars, whose innumerable light repeats one mystery to conjecture ends, the stream of time, known by both bursting bubbles, the gulf of silence, empty even of naught, thought's high walled maze, which the hour did only troubles because the strings lost and the plan forgot. When I think on this and that, here I stand, a thinker of these thoughts, emptily wise, holding up to my thinking my thin hand, and looking at it with thought alien eyes. The prayer my wonder looketh past the universal darkness, lone and vast. Beauty and love let no one separate, whom exact nature did to each other fit, given to beauty love as finishing feet, and to love beauty as true colour of it. Let he but friend be, who the soul finds fair, but let none love outside the body's thought, so this seen topless togetherness shall bear truth to the beauty each in the other sort. I could but love thee out of mockery of love and thee and mine own ugliness. Therefore thy beauty I sing, and wish not thee, thanking the gods, I am not out of place, lest, like a slave that for king's robes doth long obtained, shall with mere wearing do them wrong. When in the widening circle of rebirth to a new flash my troubled soul shall come, and try again the unremembered earth with the old sadness for the immortal home, shall I revisit these same different fields, and cull the old new flowers with the same sense, that some small breath of foil remembrance yields of more rage than my days in this pretense. Shall I again regret strange faces lost, of which the present memories forgot, and but in unseen bulks of vagueness tossed out of the closed sea and black night of thought? Were thy face one, what sweetness would not be, though by blind feeling to remember thee? Thought was born blind. But thought knows what is seen. Its careful touch, deciphering forms from shapes, still suggests form as aught whose proper being mere finding touch therein darkness drapes. Yet once, except from guest sight, does touch teach that touch is but a close and empty sense. How does mere touch, self contented, reach for some truer sense's hell intelligence? The thing once touched, if touch be now omitted, stands yet in memory real and outward known. So the untouched memory of touch is fitted with the sense of a sense whereby four things are shown. So, by touch of untouching, wrongly right, touch thought of seeing sees not things but sight. My soul is a stiff patient, man by man, of some Egyptian art and Egypt odour, found in some tomb whose right no guest can scan, where all things else to colour the dust did moulder. Whatever its sense may mean, its age is twin to that of priesthoods whose feet stood near God, when knowledge was so great that it was a sin, and man's mere soul to man for its abode. But when I ask what means that patient eye, and would look at it suddenly, I lose the sense I had of seeing it, 
No, I can try again to look, no have my memory I use that seems recalling, save that it recalls an emptiness of having seen those walls. Even as upon a low and cloud-domed day, when clouds are one cloud to the horizon, our thinking senses deem the sun away and say, to sunless, and there is no sun, and yet the very day that run truth by is of the unseen sun's fluent essence, the very words do give themselves the lie, the very thought of absence comes from presence. Even so deem we through good of what is evil. He speaks of light that speaks of absent light, and absent God, becoming present devil, is still the absent God by essence right. The withdrawn cause by being withdrawn of God, being thereby caused still the denied effect. Something in me was born before the stars, and saw the sun begin from far away. Our yellow looking day on its wont jaws, for it hath come in with an absolute day. Through my thoughts night, as one robe's heard trail that I have never seen, I drank this past that saw the possible, like a dawn grow pale on the lost night before it, mute and vast. It dates remoter than God's birth can reach, that had no birth by the world's coming after. So the world's to me as, after whispered speech, the cause ignored sudden echoing of laughter. That has a meaning my conjecture knows, but that it has meanings all its meaning shows. We are in fate and fates, and do but lack outness from so to know ourselves its dwelling, and do but compel fate aside, or back by fate's own eminence and the compelling. We are too far in us from outward truth to know how much we are not what we are, and live but in the heat of error's youth, yet young enough its acting youth to ignore. The doubleness of mind fails us, to glance at our exterior presence amid things, sizing from otherness our countenance, and seeing our puppet wills act act and strains. An unknown language speaks in us, which we are the words of, fronted from reality. The world is woven all of dream and terror, and but one sureness in our truth may lie. And when we hold to aught our thinking's mirror, we know it not by knowing it thereby. For but one side of things the mirror knows, and knows it curled it from its solidness. A double lie its truth is. What it shows by true shows false, and nowhere by true place. Thought clouds our life's day sense with strangeness, yet never from strangeness more than that it's strange doth by our perplexed thinking, for we get by the world's sense from words, knowledge, truth, change. We know the world is false, not what is true, it with in con, knowing we ne'er shall know. How yesterday is long ago. The past is a fixed infinite distance from today, and bygone things, the first lived as the last, an irreparable sameness far away. How the to be is infinitely ever out of the place wherein it will be now, like this sea wave yet far up in the river, which reaches not us but the new waved flow. This thing time is whose being is having none, the quobble tyrant of our different fates, who could not be bought off by a shattered sun, or tricked by new years of our careful deeds. This thing time is, that to the grave will bear my heart, sure but of it, and of my fear.
The edge of the green wave whitely doth hiss upon the whited sand. I look yet dream. Surely reality cannot be this. Somehow, somewhere, this surely doth but seem. The sky, the sea, this great extent disclosed of outward joy, this bulk of life we feel, is not something, but something interposed. Only what in this is not this is real. If this be to have sense, if to be awake, be but to see this bright, great sleep of things. For the rare potion mine own dreams I'll take, and for truth commune with imaginings, holding a dream to bitter, a too fair curse, the scum and sleep of man, the universe. My weary life that lives unsatisfied on the foiled offspring of being or but this, to whom the power to will hath been denied, and the will to renounce doth also miss. My sated life with having nothing sated, and the notion of moving by the day, within its dreams from its own dreams abated, this life let the gods change or take away. For this endless succession of empty hours, like deserts after deserts, widely one, doth undermine the very dreaming powers, and dull in thoughts active in action, taint with four unwilled will the dreamed act, twice thus removed from the unobtained fact. I do not know what truth the false untruth of this sad sense of the sin world may own, or if this flowered plant bears also fruit unto the true reality unknown. But as the rainbow, neither earth's nor skies, stands in the dripping freshness of lulled rain, a hope, not real yet, not fancies, lies athwart the moment of our seasoned pain. Somehow, since pain is felt, yet felt as ill, Hope hath a better warrant than being hoped. Since pain is felt as aught we should not feel, man hath a nature's reason for having groped. Since time was time, and age and grief his measures, towards a better shelter than time's pleasures. I am older than nature and her time, by all the timeless age of consciousness, and my adult oblivion of the clime where I was born makes me not countryless. Ay, and dim through my daylight thoughts escape yearnings for that land where my childhood dreamed, which I cannot recall in color or shape, but haunts my hours like something that hath gleamed, and yet is not as light remembered nor to the left or to the right conceived, and all round me taste as if life were dead, and the world made but to be disbelieved. Thus I my hope on unknown truth lay, yet how but by hope do I the unknown truth get? When I have sense of what to sense appears, sense is sense, or it is mine, or mine in me is. When I hear, hearing, or I do hear, hears. When I see, before me abstract seeing sees. I am part soul, part I, in all I touch. Soul by that part I hold in common with all. And I, this spoiled part, that doth make sense such as I can err by it, and my sense mine call. The rest is wondering what these thoughts may mean, that come to explain, and suddenly again, like messengers that mock the message mean, explain it all by the explanation. As if we as ciphered letters cipher it, and find it in an unknown language writ. He that goes back does, since he goes, advance. Though he does not advance, he goeth back. And he that seeks, though he on nothing chance, may still by words be sad to find a lack. This predicts of heaven, 
that is not in the world's meaning of the things it screens is yet true of the substance of pure thought and then means something by the naught it means but thinking not does on not being confer as given not is acting not to give and to the same unbribed true thought to err is to find truth though by its negative so why call this world false if false to be be to be ought and being ought being to be happy the maimed the halt the mad the blind all who stamped separate by curtailing birth owe no duties allegiance to mankind nor stand a value in their scheme of worth but i whom fate not nature did curtail by no exterior voidness being exempt must bear accusing glances where i fail fixed in the general orbit of contempt fate less than nature in being kind to lacking given the ill shows not as out a cause making our mock free were the mirrors backing which fates own acts as if in itself shows and men like children see the image there take place for cause and make our will fate bear good i have done my heart weighs i am sad the outer day white statue of the blue is altogether outward father glad at mere being not i so my aches construe i that have failed in everything bewail nothing this hour but that i have bewailed for in the general fate what is it to fail why fate being past for fate tis but to have failed whatever hap or stop what matters it save to the mattering our will bringeth naught were the high trifling let us world our wit conscious that if we did that was the lot the regular stars bound us to when they stood godfathers to our birth and to our blood